Yep. So thank you. Um, I'm really happy to see so many faces still here. Uh, uh, I hope that, well, it's very challenging to, to do it uh, in 50 minutes uh, before lunch indeed. Uh, you will be probably thinking about lunch uh, after 12 already, but still stay with me and I will uh, do my best to, to make it more interactive. Uh, I will not uh, speak all 50 minutes about instant payments and, and uh, have some surprises and maybe hope that you would also uh, share your views on, on the points I have on, the, on my last slides of, of my presentation. Well, it's, uh, by the way, PSD2 is, uh, is not the name of a robot, but uh, it's, uh, if you Google PSD2 rifle, you will find that there is a well, shooting game having PSD2 uh, rifle. So go ahead, Dennis, yeah, right. Uh, before I will tell you about instant payment, just some background information on, on payments as a whole. So you can see here, we are not yet like Sweden, but uh, during the last three years, and I, I don't have uh, latest data here yet, because we, we are very close to start this survey for 2020. Nevertheless, we are really moving to non-cash here in Latvia. The tendency here is quite obvious. And, uh, well, the same uh, applies to Euro area, uh, but, well, sti still cash dominates in, in, in uh, many countries, especially in German-speaking countries, cash dominates. Nevertheless, if we try to understand what is the most popular non-cash instrument, it's a payment card for sure. We don't have national payment card scheme. We have Visa, MasterCard, uh, cards here in Latvia and 64% of non-cash payments in Latvia are made with payment cards. So it's not an instant payment world yet. Well, guys, probably some of you are millennials and uh, I am 34, but I do not consider myself, myself as millennial. However, I understand those uh, demands and, and their interests. And uh, millennials, well, they are really famous now with their behavior, payment behavior. They are quite keen to open accounts via their smartphone. They, are, they could just very easily change their bank, their payment service provider, even if, well, it may seem a bit costly. And, and indeed, they are pushing payments to, to be mobile. Uh, if we want to address these needs of, of if we still have customer-oriented approach, we need to deliver, well, mobile services. This is a basic. Well, uh, five years ago, we, we already saw the experience of UK, Denmark, Sweden, and we understood, well, if we could deliver instant payments here in Latvia, that could benefit our society and, and the enterprises here. And we started our work. And uh, uh, after a couple of years, even Europe understood that this is a way ahead. And, uh, and politically, there's, well, they, they started to support this, uh, this uh, movement forward towards pan-European instant payments. And uh, well, you may ask, why do we need them? Because we have payment cards. Well, just a simple fact, both these logos uh, belong to US companies. And you know, politically, the world is quite complicated now. And uh, I don't think we would like to be dependent on, on, uh, on the decisions and, and uh, well, mood of this guy, right? Well, but also there is some more risk coming now in, in, in re recent years. Uh, these big four, big so-called big techs or tech giants, they almost all have uh, launched their payment solutions, currently available mainly in US. But well, for such a big company, it's uh, quite an easy thing to, to come to Europe, right? And indeed, uh, this is not uh, also something coming from US, but uh, but from Asia, we have well, the same winds, and uh, there are technology companies very, 
already very famous and very experienced in doing banking, yeah, being technology companies. So the issue is what, what would be European response to that? Is instant payment our dragon if winter is coming? Well, first of all, it could be industry-driven response, but uh, response should be strong enough. And uh, here central banks decide to come uh, and to step, to step in. And indeed, it could be, well, to different, uh, it could be different level. It could be uh, quite, quite intense uh, uh, involvement of the central banking. But I, I really like Mark Carney. He is saying that, well, central banks to play a role, especially as infrastructure provider. And infrastructure makes sense because big companies come with big uh, and, uh, well, uh, billions of dollar valued infrastructures. And, well, we are in the game. We are doing our best to support this, uh, uh, well, scenario of pan-European instant payments to, to be a reality here. And uh, still, uh, after five years working on instant payments, it is still a market-driven project for us. It's not mandatory, so it's payment service providers, well, mainly banks, can decide on themselves if they want to uh, provide such a service or not. Uh, from our side, we were the first. Latvia's Banka, with its infrastructure, was were the first uh, in the Eurozone uh, delivering instant payment infrastructure and already having first transactions during, well, launch, uh, during first days of, of operation. So we launched and already had several transactions there. So there were some launches of uh, uh, infrastructures, but, well, other European countries waited for November uh, when the scheme was launched and then they had first transactions there. So I'm very proud of this. And uh, indeed, well, <clears throat> if, I, if I say, what is SEPA instant credit transfer? Perhaps you, you will, well, make some links and, 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 uh, and uh, guesses that it is instant payment. Nevertheless, one of the first things we did here in Latvia, we rebranded this instant payment to make it recognizable, to make it, well, to give a feeling that it's national product, again, as, uh, Jarunas, I guess, uh, was, was telling that people need to, well, quite simple things and, and quite difficult to understand. Why do they need them? But now I, I would say that Zipmax Times is it, it, it quite, well, loved brand here in Latvia. People understand it. People doesn't differentiate. Well, uh, is it instant, pure instant, not? Uh, is it interbank or, or, or which banks d delivers it? Doesn't matter. So people understand Zipmax Times is is absolutely uh, uh, instant transfer uh, in, in euro between different banks. Well, for, uh, for those of you who, who don't know what is instant payment, so we speak about only euro transfer, uh, instant payment is based on SEPA uh, standards. So it's the same SEPA transfer, but uh, uh, quite rapid one. And, uh, well, Christops mentioned that, well, there are 10 seconds. It's a, uh, uh, I would say, uh, time. We aim to uh, pro uh, process instant payments with a uh, time of 20 seconds. Nevertheless, uh, well, if you put a, quite a high level of, of, of uh, standards for yourself, and, and it's uh, definitely less than one second, uh, available 24-7, during all the year, no weekends, no, no holidays, nothing. So we are running uh, instant payments uh, without any, any stops, any maintenance works and so. Yeah, so how many technical guys we have here? Is somebody interested? Well, so, uh, whoa, nice. Uh, just a scheme for you, just to show that we are using RabbitMQ well, open source um, uh, queue uh, processing uh, protocol, right? So MQ, uh, MQ. Uh, I will have uh, more details afterwards. And well, it's based on the internet. No dedicated Swift lines, no dedicated CLI, therefore 
which is quite expensive. Therefore, banks in Latvia uh, don't charge it well as an extra because it's quite obvious. Nothing special here from the infrastructure point of view. Yeah, so some details, uh, MQP and, uh, and, uh, and uh, well, public, certificate, uh, pu public keys also for, for signing messages. So runs perfect, works perfect so far. Uh, and uh, some numbers for business guys here. So in our system, last year we have processed 6.5 million instant payment transactions, uh, amounting 1.2 billion euros. And this is a great thing. It's, uh, well, 0 0.4 seconds for uh, the whole cycle, starting from the uh, payer's bank message coming into our system and uh, ending with a response from our system coming from pay payee's bank that, well, money was delivered and, and is available already for, for a payee. And one more thing, so 99.91 availability. This simple scheme and such a high availability. Well, we are, look, we are doing very good. And uh, how does it look in Europe? So latest numbers I have the, here is 5.5% of all SEPA transactions are made as instant payment. So already uptake is very promising. However, in Latvia, we, we have three banks, three biggest banks, by the way, I would say most innovative banks in Latvia offering instant payments and, uh, and around 30%, according to my evaluation, 30% of, uh, of the, all their transactions are made as instant payments. What Christophe have said before, uh, has said before, uh, then here it's very important to understand that while banks are not branding these products separately, customer can benefit already, can, uh, can receive the service without knowing that it's uh, an instant payment. So just making a payment and uh, by default, the bank will use instant payment channel to process this payment. Therefore, numbers very good. And uh, uh, I've said already, I'm very happy that it's not an extra. Uh, I know in Germany there are cases when uh, instant payment uh, is charged five euros, six euros, eight euros. And, and here in Latvia, if you use uh, the monthly package from a bank, well, unlimited number of uh, instant payments free of charge for you. Uh, yeah, but well, and you do have instant payments. The only thing you can do to make, you, may, you can make payment via internet banking or mobile banking environment, and that's all. Pay your bills faster, maybe make indeed P2P transfer. But yeah, as millennials call, come, as we use our mobile uh, more often to make payments and, and, and for banking, it's a quite crucial thing to, to have an opportunity to have well, very modern service for mobile banking, like Revolut have, has and, and, and many other neo banks offer. Therefore, value added services make a lot of sense here. First thing, we have created so called proxy service, uh, allowing banks to uh, link their customer accounts with their phone numbers. And therefore, uh, you don't need to uh, know IBAN account number of the beneficiary anymore. So you can find the payee in your uh, contact book, in your smartphone, and, and make payments uh, and address payment directly to him using just a phone number. So this is a separate service. And uh, you see Estonian flag here. So uh, huge interest from Estonian banking community. I just give a small, small, small hint here uh, soon this uh, partnership will be announced officially. And, uh, and the Estonian banks are very much interested in using this particular service. Well, if you move forward and uh, well understand that uh, now using, especially with this proxy service, proxy register, uh, 
P2P payments will be improved and, and uh, banks will be able now to deliver even better services for P2P payments. Uh, PSD2 delivers also to e-commerce and they have uh, better solutions now and you can actually, I had the same experience, uh, paid an invoice somewhere uh, around midnight, uh, received a call at uh, 9 uh, o'clock next morning and, and guys were asking, well, when we can deliver the goods to you. Uh, and, and so this makes all the processes faster indeed. And therefore, we are very close to, uh, to start thinking about instant payment at, at POI, POI, point of interaction, physical point of sale, and e-commerce indeed. And, and this is a question, how to deliver it, taking into account the level of convenience payment cards have, have and, uh, and security and other stuff. So quite challenging indeed, but here's my answer request to pay so one more value added service called request to pay you know many banks already have it within uh, uh, one bank the service when you can request payment indeed revolut has it uh, as well and uh, the main problem here is that it is not working into uh, in the interbank domain so between banks they, they do have different formats standards and then they cannot exchange these messages. What we are now aiming to do to create an uh, infrastructure able to process these messages between different banks. And this is a scheme for, uh, for technical guys, but uh, nothing, nothing complicated here based on two uh, uh, message formats, pane uh, 13 and pane 14. Um, there are some talks about pan-European scheme for that, uh, a unified one and, and, and then you can uh, use request to pay both for instant payment for other SEPA payments but then it well I, I would assume it will be more complicated here we, we, we are going to offer uh, Latvian and Estonian banks as well a simplified one something really to uh, work on during this year well this is my message as regards to way forward uh, so my feeling is that, that request to pay functionality will definitely allow us to challenge cards at physical point of sales we'll see uh, a couple of years ago we had a discussion when uh, when we just when we were close to launch instant payments we had a discussion with our local banking community with merchants with a uh, worldline uh, card processor about well how many years it may take to start discussion about really really situation real situation when cards can be challenged and uh, it was mentioned that it may take three to five years before we start to speak but if you look back and next year the couple of interesting uh, say uh, events happened uh, and and this shows already that the competition has already had already started right so visa and mastercard especially they are worried a bit and mastercard tries to uh, extend their profile and and scope of the services they uh, they provide well we understand that banks having a uh, very good uh, and well uh, uh, quite a lot of money invested in card infrastructure would not be very keen to uh, to cooperate to uh, develop instant payments therefore we have established already but not yet announced a waiting still for some participants so-called uh, uh, innovation lab so uh, kind of umbrella framework to work to to organize our further work on instant payments on request to pay with banking community with banking and non-banks community but um, just just uh, in next slide i will i will uh, tell you what are opportunities for non-banks so ziblab uh, something we have already uh, mentioned before uh, announced and uh, and i just just working currently on the uh, on the plan what we are going to do there well how to keep the momentum for you yeah 
I guess here, because I know Kristaps, he is representative of banking community. I would assume the majority here uh, belong to non-banks mainly or technology providers. So it's very complicated. Payments, no, they, they, they are more democrat democratized. Yeah. And uh, it's easy to step in. However, it's very difficult to compete. Almost everyone, every e-money institution now can issue their own cards, right? But, but still, you, you need to understand what customer needs you, uh, you want to address and how you will monetize your product and you can, can't build it just on, on, well, on top of the technology. You need to understand the business case. And yeah, all these sexy things. I was, I was trying to present you instant payment infrastructure, proxies, uh, request to pay in future. This is the whole infrastructure package. We offer now, yeah, uh, yeah. You may say, well, Lithuanian central bank does it, it and, and sees it differently. I would say, well, so far, uh, our previous cooperation with our local banks was based on understanding that non-banks can join the family if it's win-win. So far, access to proxy uh, service, for example, for non-banks is limited very much limited because there is no win, uh, win situation. So banks will be feeding the data and you will give nothing, right? You will use this data for your innovative services. Well, I am a central bank and banker, I can be tough here. <sighs> right, so um, another thing, legal aspect, payment systems are protected by law and it's it's not allowed, uh, non-banks are not allowed to, to, to be direct participants. If we go for a principle, well, same service, same risk, same rules, then you can imagine what does it mean? Keeping money in the central bank, uh, deposits, uh, guarantees, and, and so on. So can appear to be very cumbersome and just will fit only few and will not fit others. Therefore, therefore, I'm very much in favor uh, about ongoing discussion on the European level. Not very uh, loud so far, uh, not being very public, but still ongoing on uh, direct participation of non-banks in payment systems, right? So we can put all the risks on all operators of infrastructures, but uh, then to uh, uh, in that way, delivering and ensuring this level playing field for both for banks and non-banks. We'll see. Well, just invite you to follow. Well, and while you may feel now a bit disappointed with my presentation, let's think about <laughs> how, we can, uh, how we can proceed when, well, in my opinion, non-banks feel like and, and look like free folks. So you are isolated, you have risk from both sides, well, white walkers, well, the, the kingdom as well don't want to see you and, and well, it's a, it's a question of survival. You need to get to another uh, side of the wall and indeed you can complement, you can contribute and you can improve financial services and well, the strength is cooperation with banks. Some niches and opportunities. While by yourself, you perhaps don't have many, many chances, many opportunities to, uh, to provide uh, services, payment services using instant payment infrastructure, you still can serve payers' banks with value added services or just services from technical point of view. You can serve merchants indeed at a POI because if you go for a request to pay and if we are we have intention to challenge payment cards at POI, probably you have an idea how to do it, the best way, the most efficient way. Uh, we have no ideas about the infrastructure. We will not go to this particular level. And, and maybe this is your opportunity to step in, in this domain. And indeed PAE, typical SME, I know in Latvia, uh, many of them feel uh, quite unbanked they lack really uh, good services for, uh, for their liquidity management, for uh, payments management. Well, the example there is that 
if you tried to make a pay, make a purchase in uh, any uh, biggest internet shops in Latvia, you may find that well they are not taking accounts to their uh, they are not taking payments to their account. They use Paysera, for example, as an intermediary. So it shows that ECMEs really lack good services to to manage their payments. They better outsource it things. Well. Something being an AI, blockchain, and, and uh, uh, other technology fan, I could not mention this. Uh, I think that still banks will not go this way. They will focus on improving services, but, but not so much on pioneering. And pioneering classically was a thing fintech did, right? So maybe this is something you could find your new opportunity gamification api uh, enriched big data machine learning ai blockchain whatever so some food for thought right i'm here uh i will i will stop here as regards to instant payment would invite Yanis to help me if you have any questions maybe audience has any questions just in particular to instant payments and then few slides just to, to conclude before lunch. Yeah, on instant, yeah. On instant payments. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> so on instant payments, the, even the first schema that you mentioned, like peer-to-peer -peer yeah. payments with the aliases, it sort of will work not only, you don't need only instant payments, you basically need alias, yeah. and then you also need convenient authentication tool. Luckily, we have smart ID, implemented True. by the banks yeah. otherwise it would be really awkward to peel, pull out the code card or pin calculator yep. to do a yeah. one second payment oh. so what do you think are the key precondition for a uh, point of sale uh, because we're not talking just to make a payment mm -hmm. because i think that the greatest value that is coming from the card schemas are actually behind all those other things if you want to put yeah. things at scale yeah. like claim management uh, like uh, security management and devices etc true, true so uh, when uh, can talk a lot uh, about this uh, issue because uh, this one appears to be one of the most critical and indeed when we already had some talks with the industry uh, we found that uh, actually the payment API could be based on instant payments we still potentially could use payment cards but the main issue is authentication of the user right so this is the uh, big, biggest, I don't think it could appear a biggest uh, showstopper, but, but it's really a pain point. Uh, what, what I would expect that, uh, well, while we, uh, we, are, we will be moving forward with instant payments, uh, regulators and European Commission may come with some uh, amendments to PSD2, to uh, RTSs uh, defining, well, where, uh, whether we can have an exemption for instant payment because then you can understand it's absolutely impossible to uh, compete with uh, uh, contactless cards when you just swipe and that's all and even if you if you if you take now your mobile phone uh, in the shop you, you you still need to put your pin to unlock it and then you can swipe so already complicated i do not use it because i i prefer a payment card you can just swipe yeah and 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 that makes makes a lot of sense from the user perspective because because if it requires you uh, some more uh, touches on the screen some more uh, activities it will not be uh, very very much used. but yeah so cannot answer <laughs> i'm running yeah, with sure. the microphone no 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 yeah thank you thank you for the presentation yeah. uh question on on branding so, so you mentioned it's like the goal is to be you know, across Europe, but at least across Baltics. Uh, wh how, what is the branding story? Like current branding is heavily Latvian oriented. And if you talk about like Estonian cooperation, like how would a customer from Estonia interact with this? Like, do you have a branding story for cross Baltic or cross Europe? Well, first, first of all, branding is a not, not typic typical uh, stuff uh, central banks uh, do, right? So it was our idea, was our... Uh, quite a no novel approach I would say and uh, first of all we wanted to make it uh, to make it differently um, uh, comparing to uh, SEPA when uh, well 
we implemented something banks don't have a SEPA payment they have euro payment and and uh, well we always speak that well it's SEPA deli uh, has delivered so many benefits to you we decided to take another approach as regards to Estonia well uh, indeed they could potentially cooperate under zip blob but I don't think they could offer zip max signs right or or or, or zip site uh, like a proxy register they will have their another another uh, branding approaches uh, behind that uh, there are some discussions uh, within uh, biggest banking groups here in uh, Baltics about having their own brand on particular product when you for example offer mobile instant payment to brand it somehow somehow i i don't know uh, what direction it takes and and will if there will be uh, quite a good solution for all three belt countries but it may appear we we have another brand for specific pro banking product based on instant payments as regards to european perspective still well, it's quite far from having a pan-European brand. Nevertheless, it, uh, it's something that will definitely appear and, and will have. And uh, I will get back to it in, uh, in a well, couple of minutes uh, because I do have more slides on instant payments and European perspective. Any Good. questions? Maybe yes, one more? Yes, we have bajillion questions. <laughs> uh, Rabbit MQ does not guarantee message delivery order. How do handle possible collisions? Uh, why did you choose Rabbit MQ <laughs> over Kafka? K F K A Kafka? Yeah. Nice Kafka. Yeah. Kafka. Good. So, uh, guys interested in uh, receiving the re response to this question uh, i invited to send me an email and uh, come and get a contact because i'm uh, I, I, we, we have a, a tech guru in our team and, and then um, i think that we can uh, provide quite a long list of arguments why this solution was was um, preferable so there's a smart reason that's the simple <laughs> answer uh, do company need licensing to use this Zibmaxiums API? There's the question on the screen as yeah, well. Yeah, I'm thinking, well, first of all, just for, uh, to, to make it clear, uh, we are not speaking about PSD2 API, so, right? Uh, we are speaking about API, I, I guess I, I, I have understood it correctly, we are speaking about API, uh, like an infrastructure or s solution how to uh, get access and uh, well as i said it already uh, it's quite quite co think the situation is quite complicated because we as a central bank actually do not offer uh, direct access to our system so uh, currently uh, yeah it should be licensed company but they are mainly banks for non-bank it's uh, it's almost impossible. You can use services of direct participants, banks, and then you should understand that it's very much depend on uh, how uh, on the solution on their side if they are able to provide you instant intermediary service, and if they will, if it will be for a reasonable price. Therefore, I told you already. Well, everything looks nicely, but just a few opportunities for you, and and still uh, very limited. Uh, options All right okay i think one more question and we can continue yeah, sure. with the slides uh do you see that instant qr code qr code based payments will be available anytime soon in latvia yeah good question because uh you know uh, in asia they use qr codes for many years and uh, you just start thinking well if it's whether it's really innovative technology it's rather simple widely used and and then you you, you try to find something better than QR codes and uh, now uh, then uh, QR codes also uh, they are becoming more complicated so we are going towards uh, dynamic QR codes and I would not exclude that such solutions can can appear and and definitely there are business cases 
per QR code. But again, we are back to this issue, which is quite general issue of customer perspective. If you need to take your mobile, find an app and scan a QR code, would this solution be, would you be in favor to use such solution if, if you have uh, contactless cards you can just swipe on? Okay, so I know 15 minutes uh, left and, uh, and more food for thought. Because I'm a policy guy, so uh, I know uh, some more, would say, more information than you. I'm, uh, I'm participating in different uh, discussion, uh, strategic one, and, uh, and, 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 well, when I read kind of uh, forecasts, I more or less understand what is, well, truth and what is bullshit, right? So, four slides to give you understanding how the world is... Uh, complicated right what's next and uh, here we are back to instant payments and uh, what do you prefer best coke or pepsi okay is there somebody who prefers pepsi okay do you want do you know what is the links uh, between pepsi and payments well try to google somewhere in October, Pepsi and payments, right? Because there was one very tricky initiative announced, initiative by eight European countries, uh, 20 European, biggest European banks, and it was uh, named Pepsi at that particular period of time. The Pepsi was seeking for a uh, support of European authorities because European authorities in their European payment strategy wanted to deliver truly pan-European instant payment based solution and Pepsi well came with the idea that they can address the need but with a very tricky approach first of all Pepsi wanted to have a card solution based on instant payments and this is very important thing for you, especially those working in car industry, to think about, because it still it still has not yet they still has not yet decided. I would assume that if they decide to go for this and it will be announced next month in March, it should be announced. It will be a huge pan-European project of migrating first of all all the users from national car schemes to one pan-European car scheme, and their Another direction, another product will be instant payment based digital solution for the whole Europe. You can imagine it's, well, billions of money will be invested and maybe you can find your opportunity there. If someone is working on card based card solution, card based solution, I guess you should be there in Brussels, in Spain, somewhere in Europe already offering your services. Because, well, you can really, in my opinion, get this uh, piece of the cake. And indeed, then it will have pan-European branding answering to your question, right? Uh, big techs will continue their attempts. Um, you know Libra, I guess. Yeah. So uh, there was uh, a lot of uh, discussions around Libra, but I don't think that those discussions have uh, already ended. And I think there will be attempts and big techs will come to Europe and we have to understand how they, they will change our lives, how this will affect our financial field, right? Number three, so uh, neo banks, so-called neo banks are on the rise and indeed it's a, it's a, a well, dream of every fintech to become finally a bank yeah, because, well, we have uh, Revolut at the end of the day and uh, today and, and Revolut is one good example when the successful fintech is going this way to become a bank and serve their customers. Therefore, this also uh, shows that payment as a service will become a new norm. So there will be payment service providers and there will be, well, providers offering when kind of package of services uh, for you addressing your customer needs but they understanding that well this is quite complicated to take care of, of 
all the aspects uh, in service and customer, uh, outsourcing payment as a service will become more typical, more common thing. Just think about it and try to understand whether you want to be on that particular part or maybe you want to, to work on value-added services uh, that, well, the, uh, digital banks and, and uh, fintechs uh, in banking would be willing to offer their customers. And thought, more complicated today, do you know what is CBDC? CBDC belongs to central bank digital currency. There is a lot of discussion around about central bank digital currency. Uh, many central banks, and you may, uh, may have heard about Sweden e krona project, are already working. Euro system as well is working on, on CBDC concepts. We already have, uh, I would say, two, or maybe even three years of experience in piloting different technical solutions, how CBDC could work. Could it be account-based and value-based and so on? So, uh, who knows? Maybe a new, a new president of European Central Bank, Madame Lagarde, will decide that it's her step and, and, and you, her uh, well, moment in the history of finance to, 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 to do that, that and, and to uh, promote central bank digital currency, euro, digital euro as a central bank digital currency. Who well, no, knows? We'll see, but this will make your life even more complicated and uh, probably there, there could be uh, also risk for, for banking, for traditional banking as well, because we don't know if, if central bank will open accounts for every citizen, why do we need banks then, right? So, this is from my side, what about you guys? If you think that you are ready, act now. If you need more details, if you want to come and to discuss something, I'm, I'm a very open guy. Uh, you can just find me in Facebook, in LinkedIn, or write me an email. I'm ready to uh, give you a free consultation if you want. Thank you. Applause, yes, applause. <laughs> we have a question in the yeah, back, okay. the furthest corner. Yes, I am running with the microphone because it's <laughs> being recorded and otherwise your question won't be heard. Uh, just for my curiosity, what's the maximum amount to be allowed to is allowed to pay through the zip maximum? Yeah, thank you. Very good question because uh, I promised also to explain some IML risks um, during a presentation uh, brought by Christophs. So currently, Pan European scheme has set fifteen thousand euros a limit for one instant payment transaction. That means that you have to receive all that transactions up to 15,000 euros as a, as, a, as a beneficiary bank, right? From the sending point of view, so, so as serving your customers uh, being payers, you can set your own limit. You can differentiate uh, customer categories and, and set different limits. It's, it's not prohibited. You can do it if you find it, uh, well, uh, a good practice to manage your IML risks. Then we go for a uh, next step. As of 1st July, this limit will be increased up to 100,000 euros. From one point of view, the service will be now more, uh, uh, say, uh, will, will better serve legal persons, right? So businesses will be able to make transfers to pay their bills using instant payments. From another point of view, now you have much more higher IML risks, you need to manage them. Typically, there are, well, in Latvia, two categories of banks. There are retail banks, and they manage their IML risks mainly while they onboard customers. And, well, there are other banks where they have uh, different level of risks, and, and then they need to manage every uh, transaction towards uh, well, IML uh, requirements and, and, well, CTF indeed. So uh, this is complicated, but I can't say that it's not possible. But indeed, well, it very much depends on what 
categories of customers and what level of risks uh, they have and, and why do they serve them and how do they do you serve them? Jan? Perfect. Uh, a question. Uh, how will the banks guarantee that the payment is completed in less than 20 seconds given AML regulations on the originator bank side when should AML be performed to guarantee execution time and on the beneficiary bank side? An easy question, I suppose. Okay. Yeah, no, but uh, well, just goes uh, a bit deeper than the previous one. So first of all, let's take... Um, Okay, beneficiary. If you find the coming payment suspicious, you can reject it. No problem. Everything you need. As a originator bank, well, uh, you should perform, or, well, ideally, it would be nice if you have such a system that could perform all the checks well in advance and very fast. So. Uh, that you can fit those 20 seconds before the transaction will be automatically rejected. If you can't, if your IML systems require you one minute, I don't know, uh, even more, half an hour to, to do IML checks, well, indeed, it's not possible. It's not, uh, it's not possible to combine such system with instant payments. Either you take risks and do some, well, post-transaction evaluation and assessment of risks, but then you should carefully uh, do onboarding and, uh, and assess your customers. There is no uh, another way, I would say. Okay, and uh, I think we might have two f fast questions because we have literally 40 seconds and while I'm speaking, the time is running out. As Visa and MasterCard is also entering instant payment market by M&A, will instant payments be real alternative to USA companies? Well, I don't know. I don't know. We are doing, <laughs> we are doing our best. Uh, and um, you see here that while these are big companies and, and we, are, we, we fully understand that in Europe we cannot compete, actually. The central banks involved, the public authorities involved, everyone wants to compete, uh, to pr promote and to support this European serenity. Yeah, and, and well, who knows? And I, we think that this central bank support very much facilitate, uh, facilitate uh, uh, well, the evolvement of such solutions that could compete. But uh, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Maybe uh, there is only money makes sense. And, and, and uh, well, who has money will buy everything and, and uh, well, take the whole market. I don't know. Okay, and as we see, people are not flooding through the door, so I guess we have time for the last question. That is, is that possible to use LB SEPA INTS by payments institution registered outside Latvia? Well, theoretically, it is possible, but as I, I've said you already, we don't have non-banks using our infrastructure so far because we have... Uh, uh, quite the specific requirements. We uh, do uh, full uh, due diligence uh, before we uh, go into partnership. To be honest, it's very complicated. In Latvia, all the all non banks are considered as a high risk, high risk customers, high risk businesses, and and banks, you know, are not willing to cooperate. And indeed, it could be uh, nonsense if if bank uh, is. Uh, declining possible cooperation, the central bank accepts it. So we are now, this means that we are taking more risks than commercial banks. And I, in my opinion, it is not acceptable. Then you may ask you, uh, may ask me uh, logically, what Dennis, you are doing to change the situation because it's well, not a fair game. I would answer that, well, I'm trying to uh, work closely with our regulator. You know that uh, likely both our institutions will be merged. We are now trying to transform regulatory approaches towards fintechs. I, I hope that we will improve, we will have better situation. So far in this IML context, I see that if we cannot move and we cannot support FinLag, so we should focus on TechLag and, and support TechLag. And therefore I have mentioned you can be a technical provider. You can uh, pioneer uh, new technologies in finance. Well, indeed, it's, well, 
not, not, not the same that bank and, and, and opportunities are very limited uh, comparing to banks, but still I, 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 I do something and I really believe that, that even this could deliver you some benefits. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's say a thank you to Denis Filippo.